Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned into the NFL on EA Sports. Confidence is never a question when it comes to wide receivers, and these two are no different. It's Tate's Lions going up against Stefan Diggs' Vikings. With that, let's welcome in our fine broadcast team. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, it's one of the new jewels of the NFL, no doubt, as you get a look inside U.S. Bank Stadium here in Minneapolis. The scene a short time ago, this crowd decked out in purple, and they were in full roar as their guys burst out of the locker room. We're ready for football, folks, as the Vikings get set to do battle with the Detroit Lions. Hello, folks, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn. And a moment ago, Larry gave us a look at the two number one receivers that will be facing off here. But you think it's more than just one-on-one. -on -one. Both these teams, they've got a number of pass-catching options. And I'm eager to see how both teams will attack the opposite defenses because is it going to be where they're going to be a dart-throwing team, throw it short and try and make plays that way? Or will the long ball be a part of it? But you're right, lots of options for both of these squads. Kai Forbath set to kick it away for the Vikings. And off we go from the Twin Cities. On the return, Dwayne Washington. And he will be marked out right there at the 20-yard line. So here are the Lions now coming out for their opening drive. They'll be led out by the ninth-year man out of Georgia, their quarterback, and that's Matthew Stafford. The arm has always been evident. The maturity has really increased in the last couple of seasons. How about 2016 for Matthew Stafford? Eight game-winning drives in the fourth quarter or overtime, the most by a quarterback in a single season in the Super Bowl era. In fact, one Detroit newspaper put the odds of all those comebacks occurring at 8.65 billion <laughs> to one. It's crazy, 8.65 billion to one. I don't know that lightning will strike twice, but what a season. First carry for Amir Abdullah. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. 12 yards there as they move the chains. I know it's a cliche, and coaches always talk about it's a team game. We need all 11 to win. But let's face it, Detroit really needs Amir Abdullah to have runs like that all season long. Missed a lot of time with injuries, especially recently. Now, Theo Riddick wound up leading the Lions in rushing last year with just 357 yards. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. From the gun, here's Stafford. To the right side to Eric Ebron. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. A gain of six there on first. Eric Ebron's got skills to spare. They just want the production to equal those, and he needs some good help in order to get that done. Had 61 catches in 2016, battling an ankle. Yeah, the surprise, though, just one of those 61 hit pay dirt. The second down run for Abdullah. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. It'll be a loss of one, and that'll lead here to a third down. So the Lions go backwards there, and unfortunately, that's something they saw a lot in 2015. They had the fewest rushing yards of any team in the NFL. That's one of those dubious titles that no one really wants to claim. Even teams who say, well, I'll worry about running it because we throw it all the time. Being able to run it when you want to is a key to success in the NFL, and Detroit struggled doing that. From the gun on third down, Stafford. And that is incomplete. I know one thing, Brandon. This was a very difficult defense to throw the ball against in 2016. What were they, third in the third. league in pass defense? Yeah, these receivers are going to have to be sharp with their routes in this one. Yeah, because they're going to show them a lot of change-ups in the secondary, and they have a good pass rush. In his fifth year from UCLA, here's Jeff Locke to kick it away. Marcus Sherrill's back deep for Minnesota.
And great special teams work here. This is knocking on the door of the five. They'll spot it at the six-yard line. Now the Vikings offense works their way back onto the field. And not great starting field position here for the offense. Now a play fake here on first down. And he's going to go down. He backed up into the end zone, and this is going to wind up a safety. Well, we, we thought these two defenses, they might come to play. One has already come to play here, a safety for the opening points of the game. Brandon, let's file this play away because if it turns out to be a tight game, who knows? This could wind up being the difference. After the safety, remember, they also need to give up the football, and here's the free kick. This is taken at the 10, and some room to maneuver. The Lions offense, they get ready to head back onto the field. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. Stafford, a quarterback of Marvin Jones and Golden Tate at wide receiver. We know that Detroit is proficient at throwing the football, but they want to increase their running game production. Only 30th in the league in 2016. They went out and signed offensive guard T.J. Lang and right tackle Ricky Wagner in order to try and get the running game going. Stafford gives to Abdullah on the draw. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Stafford gives to Abdullah. And the play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. The loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. And Anthony Barr just has it all as far as I'm concerned in terms of physique, athletic ability, and now he's versatile as well. When he came out of UCLA, he played outside linebacker, but also down defensive end. The Vikings can utilize the same sort of skills. Defense in a good spot. Let's see how the offense responds with a second and 13 now. Play action. Stafford looking downfield for Jones. And they went for a big play through the air on second down. Couldn't connect. Now it's third. 
quickly now a look at the defensive starters for Minnesota. Minnesota head coach Mike Zimmer made his reputation as a defensive coordinator in this league, and that did not change in 2016. His team finished third overall in total defense, and despite many injuries, kept his team in the playoff hunt throughout the season. And the Vikings with an extra defender in the secondary on third. Playing coverage here. Out of the gun, Stafford. Throwing deep for Galladay. And that one incomplete. Had some position but couldn't hold on and it brings up fourth down. They decided to take a shot and right down the middle of the field. And really, they didn't give it as much time to develop, did they? They want to take that shot somewhere around the 15-yard mark. And the defense able to recover, batted free. Here's Jeff Locke now. On for his second punt, he'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And a great job on special teams to down it, as this will be marked out inside the five-yard line. Now the Vikings offense gets set to take over here. And of course, coming off the safety the last time they had the football. I never want that. No, that's pretty unique too, isn't it? When you give up points that way and the scoreboard, you look up and it says two to nothing, it can throw you a little bit. Let's see if they can put that to the side and move forward. And tough starting field position here. carry now for the rookie Dalvin Cook and he'll find a little space he gets this up near the 10 it's a six yard pickup and it gets him to second and four I remember the first time I saw Dalvin Cook play in college I was watching him on TV called a scouting friend of mine and said who is this guy he's special and he said Dude, you're watching a home run hitter on the field. Yeah, he was special in Tallahassee. Left Florida State, their all-time leader in rushing yards and touchdowns. They run it again with Cook. Cook with a first down and much more. And he's brought down, but not before they get it across the 20-yard line. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. So right now, what I'm seeing... I'm seeing an offense just firing off the ball a lot quicker than they can react. And not only that, they're sustaining the blocks, too. I'm seeing guys get six, seven yards downfield before there's even a hint of contact. First down and ten now for the offensive group. Now a run with Cook. Up past the 25 to the 26, a gain of five. I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. Second down following the run. Now a play fake, and it's Keenum. And under the Lions' pressure, he's brought down. Ziggy Ansah in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. And there's no doubt in my mind that this guy has been eager for this season. Talk about Ziggy Ansah. For him to get back to sacking quarterbacks as he did in 2015, 2016 was really kind of a wash because of an ankle injury. And the Lions going with an extra DB here on third down. Now let's go. Green, 39. Out of the gun, Keenum. Shakes off the sack. Under pressure again, and down he goes 
Williams again. Ezekiel Ansah in there to get him his second sack now of the afternoon. I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. Ryan Quigley, fifth-year man from Boston College, in to punt it away. Standing about a yard deep in his own end zone. as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And the Lions will take over. So the Lions offense ready to go back out onto the field. And this is their third drive. Maybe the focus right now not so much on points, but getting their first first down. And when you start off a game, you don't even think that's an issue, do you? But you go a drive, a second drive, no first down, that becomes an issue. Now you got to think about, okay, what type of play calling do I have to do to get us in a spot to pick that first one up? First and ten, Stafford. Looking deep in the direction of Abdul. And that's caught inside the 30. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line. Almost unstoppable on the ground there as that one is good for 39. Now that play will end up on the highlights, and you'll see it all over the place. But what you won't see, the offensive line that bought the extra time, that allowed for the big completion downfield, those guys made that play possible. So the offense has it first and 10. Now Stafford hands to Abdullah. And oh, he is really laid out that time. Knocked flat on his back. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Anthony Barr got a real education at UCLA in playing not just his normal position of stand-up outside linebacker, but down defensive end. So he had to incorporate a variety of moves, take on bigger people. So he learned great leverage while he was there. That really helps him when he's trying to stop people running the ball. Born in South Bend, Indiana. Thought about going back to go to Notre Dame, but you're right. Great career at UCLA and now a great career in the NFL. Here's Stafford. Throw left side, taken in by Galladay. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. A shotgun snap for Stafford. He hits Riddick underneath. And he picks up the first as he's able to take it down to the seven-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. There are a lot of tough routes to try and cover. When you see a runner come out of the backfield and run this angle route, looks like they're going to the flat, and then they put their foot in the ground and cut back sharply inside, not easily covered. And then when they catch it, good momentum built up by them as well. And able to pick up the first. They go play action here on first down. Oh, he had six points in his hands there. Couldn't hang on. Second down. Oh, man. For him to be that wide open and drop it, sometimes you have just too much time on your hands, right? You end up thinking way too much, and your hands get shaky. And, yes, he's a tight end, but that's a catch he should have made.
second down following the incompletion. To the air again, Stafford. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked up by Harrison Smith. He's at the 50. He's at the 40. 20. 10. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. So a pick six there out of the nickel package. They went with five DBs. Almost becoming the base package in the NFL is the nickel. Hard to throw against. That was demonstrated one more time. A pick six going the other way. on for the extra point. And it's now a 7-2 ball game. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. So here come the Lions now. And last time, decent field position through the pick six. Obviously costly. But they can't afford to just bunker in now. All right, they, good field position means go ahead and attack on offense. Try and press the advantage a little bit. They just have to be better with the football on this possession. So the last that didn't bother you too much last time. No, because it's, it's exactly what you're supposed to do. You can't have good field position and not try to take advantage of it. Sometimes the defense makes a good play too. Now the Notre Dame man, this is Theo Riddick. And he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Tough running there. That's a hard-earned four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. Take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. It's a loss of two, now third down. And our statistician, Ben Ramsauer, just held up three fingers to remind me he now has three tackles for a loss only in the first quarter. Well, Ben's got a detail perfectly. He always gives us the right stats. I'd love to be on the offense's headset right now because what you're hearing is, can someone please block him? Come up with a scheme, come up with something. Make sure you block him because he's disrupting everything. Throwing on third down, Stafford. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them, they remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. Here's Jeff Locke now as he's on to punt for Detroit. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. 
A good kick, 49 yards, just three on the return. And it'll be Viking football here as they take possession. And the focus of our players' spotlight right now is shining on Case Keenum. And I guess the question, Charles, is what's the formula for keeping him better protected? Because as we see, the protection, it's struggle. And normally what you get is renewed determination. When, <laughs> when the big guy gets hit, that usually sparks people. Hey, we can't let this happen anymore. They take it personally. He's not supposed to be on the ground, but that hasn't been the case so far in this game. So maybe they've got to figure out how do they get rid of the ball faster to help out the offensive line so he doesn't get hit as much. And we'll see if they can keep him off the ground now going forward. Hey. Right, here we go. On first and ten, here's Keenum. He's got it complete to Stephon Diggs. And he's brought down after a good game. Now whistles and a timeout. Looks like we've got a Viking slow to get up. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. down. Here's the run with Cook. Oh, he's got a little daylight. Pass the 20. Touchdown, Vikings. A great effort there. 50 yards. And the Vikings get the quick strike touchdown. And on that long run, maybe the defense caught napping a little bit. The concentration level may not have been there. I agree with you on that one because those types of plays, when they result like that, they're almost like big bolts of lightning, aren't they? Whoosh, and off he goes. Forbath to add the extra point. And this one gives his guys a 12-point lead. So two plays on that scoring drive. That's how they drew it up. And a long run into the end zone, and what a run it was. Forbath out to kick this one away. This is taken at his four. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. offense they get ready to head back out there and with this deficit you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away you know what I would tell my offense right here the punter doesn't exist guys he doesn't even exist he's not a team anymore I just cut it all right so you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points no way does that guy get on the field on this drive oh, poor punter yeah he, it, it wasn't his fault but so, hey listen there's some guy there got to be casualties at times we're trying to win a game unable to connect on the first down pass play now it's second down Throwing again, Stafford. Space to maneuver at the 40. The left side completion to Jones. Stafford to Jones, enough for a Lion first down. 
They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. from the 40 to the 45, five-yard run. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. Now, prior to the snap, we hit all zeros as time has run out on the first quarter of play. Plenty of scoring here already. We're back to Minneapolis in just a moment. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Here with Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon, as the Lions are in possession of the football here to begin quarter number two. They've got a second down at five here to start things out. Just shy of midfield after a gain of about four. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action and hit them over the top. The Lions on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. They're up against a third and one situation. Now well, Stafford. And this is going to be incomplete. On third and one, I think everyone in the stadium thought they'd try and run the football there, but they tried to surprise the defense and hit something through the air. Instead, it results in an incompletion. Here's Jeff Locke now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. And this will carry out of bounds. Where are they going to spot it now? At about the 18-yard line, it looks like. And the focus of our player's spotlight right now is shining on Case Keenum. And maybe he's starting to wave the white flag a little bit. He's playing pretty well. But the pressure, it's got to him. Has to find a way to step around it, step through it, or just handle it. Because, as you mentioned, he's having a pretty good day overall. Just the hits keep coming and taking those sacks. That's not the way that they want to finish a ball game with their quarterback on the ground so much. Uh, he'd like to stay upright. When he's been upright, he's been pretty good. On first and ten, Keenum. The left side caught by Diggs. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh shot of downs. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage. And that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, a tight, a sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area. So you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. They run the counter with Cook. And he's got a good gain of seven up to the 37. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. A 
Again, it's Cook. And this time, not as successful as he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom. Quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding him to no gain. They'll run it. Here's Cook. And he's not even going to get back to the line of scrimmage. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. They tried to run right into the teeth of the defense on third down, but um, looked like those teeth were pretty sharp. <laughs> <laughs> they were having absolutely none of it stuffed him for a loss. Yeah, couldn't get any leverage up front and move people aside in order to run the ball. Here's Ryan Quigley now as he'll punt it away for the second time. Detroit offense now as they head back out onto the field and down on the scoreboard certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive punting the football sense of urgency has to take over for them here they know the score they know the situation and by the way the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense that's how they have to treat this drive they need points big time very tough spot here for the offense to start They start the drive with Abdullah. And he'll take this up to about the seven or eight yard line. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards. And it's second and two. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking. But a guy carrying the ball. He was the finisher. A really nice run. Second down, here's Stafford. It's complete to Golden Tate. It goes as a gain of eight, and it moves the chains. Slam route's effective no matter who's running the route and catching the ball. But when you have a receiver of that stature, you have to be a little bit more precise throwing it. You don't have the same catch radius with the bigger targets. First down throw, Stafford. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Daniil Hunter in there to get him for a loss of five. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you get three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. To throw on second down to Stafford. This is screen to Abdullah. And he's going to lose yardage here back at the eight. They'll wind up losing three, and now it's third down. Time to give a little credit here. That was an excellent read by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Are you crediting your defense? Got to credit them on that one because they tried to fool him, right? Tried to trick him, ran a screen, and they went to it and smothered it for a loss of yardage. First and second down were a disaster. Both went backwards. Now it's third and 18. They need something big. All 
Operating from the gun. Stanford. And he's going to go down right near the goal line. The officials look at each other. They're going to mark him at the one-yard line. Tom Johnson in there to drop him for a six-yard loss, and that'll lead to a fourth down. Now, this is where field awareness comes into play. He's getting perilously close to his own goal line, and after that sack, backed up to his own two. Here's Jeff Locke now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. So a short drop, but he's able to get it out, and this is a good kick. Cheryl's to return it. So possession goes over here on the punt, and that will come the offense as they take over. The Lions defense now back onto the field. They did their job last go around, forced the punt, hoping for more of that here. They got off the field. That's exactly what they wanted to accomplish. Get off the field, turn the ball over to their offense, and kick back and enjoy a little bit of water and rest before they have to go back out there again. Back out there now, hoping to hurry up and get more water and rest. They start the drive with Cook, and he'll get this up past the 45 to the 47. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. Second down, Cook. And he'll get three up to midfield. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blows. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. Now the Georgia Southern man, this is Jarek McKinnon. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. That's quite a spot there for his first carry of the game, but obviously they had plenty of faith in him, didn't they? No question about it. And here, why not go with the fresh legs? Able to push forward, pick up that first. Tenth carry in the game for Cook. They're able to push forward for about four down to the 37. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Cook trying to bounce it outside, but he's only able to get it back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends are like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. Keenum. And almost picked off. I guess the good news for them now, it's fourth down. Well, he did almost everything right. Excellent coverage, breaks on the football, just unable to haul it in and take it the other way. So he dropped an interception. The key for him now, don't dwell on it. Just move on to the next play.
Here's Ryan Quigley now as he's on to punt for Minnesota. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And this will be out of bounds. Now it's a question of where they'll mark it. And they'll say it crosses at the 11-yard line. Amir Abdullah gearing up now to lead this offense. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call it in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way, as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore, or they get tired, or they get out of position, or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. Eric Ebron, the big tight end, is intended target. And now it's second down. Second down here after the incomplete pass. And he's going to be taken down right at about the 15-yard line. It's a gain of about three, but it's going to leave him with third and still seven yards to go. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. They'll run it now out of the gun. And a short gain across the 15 to the 17-yard line. Two yards on the pick up there. It's fourth down. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. Here's Jeff Locke now, standing just outside his own goal line. Averaging over 50 yards a punt so far as this one's away. <laughs> we'll call that a punt of 54 yards. Well struck. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And the Vikings now heading on to the field. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. They fake the handoff. Now Keenum. And that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, however. Let's see what that's about. Pass interference. Defense. So flag for the contact. Pass interference. And I know that you're going to look at me and roll your eyes, and rightfully so, because you know what I'm going to say. Doesn't the defender have a right to the football as well? No, I just, I don't like defenders. <laughs> That's because you spent too much time with me. Okay, I'll side with you on this one. This is the correct call. Let's go! 319! Cook following the penalty. And he'll get this down only to about the 46. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Two minutes remain here in the first half. More from Minneapolis after this. In just two minutes' time, don't forget we'll get you to Orlando for our halftime report. To bring it to you, who else but Larry Ridley? Now that man knows his football. Go get him, Larry.
And they still need eight yards for the first here on second down. From the gun, it's Keenum. Finding his safety valve here. That's complete. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. Here we go now. Boom, landing. Keenum now on first down. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Stephon Diggs, his intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. Well, too much oomph, too much mustard there on that pass. They yeah, really turned it loose, didn't they? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. Now let's go. Working from the gun, Keenum. And he's going to go down here. A sack. They push him back to the 34. Hey, Sean Robinson. Able to swap him from that defensive tackle spot for a loss of five. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. The Vikings on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This will be third and 15. From the gun, here's Keenum. Over the middle here to Rudolph. And now the Lions going to stop us momentarily as they call the timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. On now is Kai Forbath to try the field goal. From the right hash, it's a 46-yard attempt. And that is not going to get there. Oh, he missed it short. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. Here's the Lion offense now as they get ready to take over. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting because three straight drives have ended with them punting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. Stafford on first down. Caught on the right side by Jones. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half.
So here we go, first and ten now. From the gun, here's Stafford. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Well, they're slinging it. And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. On second and ten, Stafford. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. He's got to throw it better. Got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught. They got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. The Lions on third down. It's been a problem. Just one for seven thus far. This is third and ten. Stafford looks to throw again. Ebron caught left side. And he's going to be out of bounds, but able to take it inside the 40-yard line. Stafford finding his big tight end Ebron for a Lion first down. Such a valuable commodity to have a tight end who can run and get open. How about what he just did there? Worked his way from right to left across the field and found his way free. Stafford here. Ebron with it over the middle. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15. A really nice gain of 25 yards. From the red zone now, Stafford. To the right side to Eric Ebron. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. As they'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go in this first half. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's brought down. A solid pickup of 13 sets him up first and goal. So we've reached halftime here in Minnesota with the Vikings on top as we send you down to our EA Sports Studios in Orlando where we find our man Larry Ridley with our halftime report. Thanks, Brandon, and welcome to the EA Halftime Report. Let's take a look back at the first half. The Vikings are happy to be in front right now and just want to play two more solid quarters. The Lions didn't play their best, and they'll need to be at their best now to come back. All right, let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. First and 10, Abdullah is wide open on the deep pass, and he'll be tackled at the 21-yard line. Sticking with the same drive, here the defense will come up with the pick. Vikings take it back all the way for the score. They go ahead by five. Now first and ten. Diggs has got nobody around him on the catch, and he ends up at midfield before he stopped on the play. Vikings later on the drive. Cook's able to get clear of the defense, and this long run goes for a touchdown. That takes the lead up to 12. All right, Larry, these two teams back out there as we get set and ready for this second half.
So both teams have their marching orders and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And this return nets positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27 yard line. Out come the Vikings. They'll have it first on offense as we begin the third. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. On first down, Keenan. He shakes him off. But now he's swallowed up and taken down. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. some space up to about the 25. They'll get four back there on the run, but now they're looking up at a third and 12 situation. And third quarter here, you've got the lead. This is where that strong run game can really benefit you. Stayed in bounds there, kept the clock going. I like all the points you just made there. And if you throw the football and it's incomplete, now you've stopped the clock and you've helped out the guys on the other side of the ball. So keep it in the hands of those runners. Keep moving it, keep grinding clock. To throw, it's Keenum. A dump down to McKinnon. Six yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. And I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. And no one there to stop it. Hits at the eight, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. So we get a look at the Lions offense as they get ready for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance to turn that into points on the offensive end. Can you imagine what the grease board looks like at the half? Because no, tell me. That, that's exactly what they printed up. Stop them on defense, get the ball back for our offense, and go downfield and score some points. Now, the last part remains to be seen, but they got the first part done very well. Do people use grease boards, or you mean the magic marker board? Yeah, those two. <laughs> <laughs> on first down at Stafford. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. Golden Tate, his intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground, incomplete. Second down now after the incompletion. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he will lose yardage on the play, back at his own 19-yard line. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that'll bring up a third and 11 situation. But these guys are going to chop into that deficit. They got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage, no yardage will be found. The Lions on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This is third and 11. They'll run it now out of the gun. 
call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. One of the things I love about this game is there's a match of wits throughout the game. Who's going to get the advantage? Who's going to catch someone off guard? It's like the offense thought they might catch the defense off balance with that play call, but unfortunately, that didn't work for them. Here's Jeff Locke now, standing right on his own five-yard line. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. He did it again. Well, he wasn't too far from breaking that. Officially, give him 15. And possession will switch hands first and 10. And now out comes Minnesota. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. Cook as they begin on the ground. And a minimal gain here as he's up to about the 47-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Well, he was looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple of yards out of it. So those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. Stop him right on the midfield stripe. Give him three yards, and now they're left needing a conversion here on third and six. Third quarter, and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. The Vikings on third down. They've had their troubles, just one for six. This will be third and six. From the 50, it's Keenan. Toward the sideline, did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got them both down, says the side judge, and that's good enough for a first down. And they convert on third with a gain of 22. And that's how you pick up a first down. Not only does he make the catch, but has enough body control to get his feet down inbounds, toe tapping and dragging to make sure he gets it done. Another tote for the workhorse this afternoon. It's Cook, and he'll get this one down to about the 27. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. So where'd all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. See if they stay on the ground for second down. On play action, it's Keenum. And he is out of bounds right around the 10-yard line. That one good for 17 yards, and now they've got it first and goal. As if he didn't have enough to think about. On that route, the comeback route, coming back to the football and catching it, started to make sure he toe-tapped and kept himself in bounds. And that was spectacular, but on the comeback route, maybe a little easier to deal with the sideline since you, you've got better vision of it? I think that's a great point because you should know exactly where you're going and know how much space you have and make sure you get your feet down. But, yeah, coming back to the there football, I like it. Good vision. They'll run with Cook. It's a gain of a couple, and it'll be second in goal. 
Defensively, pretty good start there with their backs against the wall. That's a win for the stop troops right there. And if I'm them, I get a little bolder now. They won the first battle, keep coming after them, put the pressure on them. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Second and goal now from the eight. They try again with Cook. And only about a yard there as he takes it from the nine to the eight. Partner, I know we're in a goal-to-go situation, but my goodness, think about running the ball here. Not even a thought, yeah, is it? Defensively, they're in a prime spot. And I think the defensive guys are probably expressing themselves to them as well. I wouldn't run it here, guys. You might want to try throwing it. All right, here we go. Now Keenum on third and goal. And that is incomplete. I know every offense wants to start their snaps closer to the goal line, but it's actually harder to throw the ball in those situations. You throw into that tight coverage, you see what happens. Hard to get the ball in there. Not enough space there. Lucky maybe that it wasn't intercepted. And Forbath will put this one through, and that will extend their lead even further. So he missed a field goal earlier, but he says not this time, and he's able to knock it through to give his guys three. And that's all you want as a kicker, a chance to redeem yourself. You got to have a short memory if you're going to survive at this level, and he's able to get back on track. Forbath now to kick it away after the made field goal. This is taken at his four. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. And Detroit getting set to go now. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Carry here for the big tight end. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there and now second down. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time because let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. So now 11 yards to go for this offensive unit. It's second down. A shotgun snap for Stafford. A dump off for Abdullah. They showed off a nice juke of the defender before the next wave could bring him down. It's a nine-yard pickup on the play, and they're going to have a third down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. The Lions on third down, not so hot. Two for nine to this point. This time they face a third and two. Here's Stafford. And Tate's got it. And he's finally taken down, but not before getting across midfield and across the 45-yard line. A very solid gain of 27. So there on that play, offensively, they ran the crossing route. Defense was in zone coverage, so as a former DB, how tough is it to defend there? It's really difficult because your natural inclination is to chase the receiver and maybe leave your zone. So you have to have discipline in order to 
talk to your other coverage guys and let him know that that receiver is crossing from your zone to the next zone. He's coming your way. Make sure you have him. And then when the ball is actually thrown, secure the tackle. When they're moving on crossing routes, if you miss a tackle, it usually results in a big play. Over the middle, complete to Tate. Flashy little move, but unable to reach the 40. Second down, eight. Again, it's Stafford. And that's incomplete. He was out there waving his arms, saying, throw it here, dropped it, not a good look. Well, all I can do is just look at him with contempt on that one. As a defensive back, I'm saying, not as an announcer. <laughs> just like, really? A little bit of a diva look, isn't it? Yeah, very much so, because I think what happens is he just had too much time to think. He's wide open now. Here comes the ball, and he doesn't concentrate and drops it. The Lions on third down. They're hitting at just 30%, three for 10. This is third and eight. Throwing again at Stafford. It's brought in left side by Tate. And he's able to pick up the first before he's taken down at the 27. 15 yards there for number 15. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. On first and 10, Stafford. Throw left side, taken in by Galladay. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Another nice gain, 16 yards there, and a first down again. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. He's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, I, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. And able to get him inside the five here, just inside the five to about the four. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. And the eighth play on this drive coming up. A second down run for Abdullah. And he's going to take it in for a Lion touchdown. Amir Abdullah taking it in from four yards out. And the Lions are able to cut into this lead. That's the score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there's an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard, you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. And this one's back to an eight-point game. Good. 
So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And it's Amir Abdullah that finishes it off with a touchdown run. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he'll wind up getting an extra couple yards here for his trouble as he'll bring this one out to the 27. And you see Dalvin Cook in the offense heading back out. He's been a good workhorse. I know we use the word workhorse a lot, but he's been a good workhorse for him in this one. No doubt about it, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's what you're looking for if you're a back because that means everything's coming together for you. Big guys up front have created space. You've run through it. And you've probably got some help even from the wide receivers who want to catch passes as opposed to block, but they're helping out too. Yeah, everyone's pitching in. He's had a good game. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll be tackled at about the 35. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball, but when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace it. Just two yards to go here on second down for the offense. Here we go now. Blue lining. Ah. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be knocked down sideways. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. So it'll be first out here after the run. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he is going to feel that one. Knocked down hard, right at the line of scrimmage. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. That was a really nice play, be able to stack that one up. When they get back in the huddle, he's got to he's tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free, and make the hit on the runner. Filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one-yard gain. And now they'll throw with Keenum. Toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Adam Thielen there. And that takes us from second to third down. The Vikings on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This is third and nine. Shotgun snap for Keenum. And this is going to be incomplete. Here's Ryan Quigley now. He's been terrific so far. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports.
Back now at beautiful new U.S. Bank Stadium. It's the Lions trailing, but with possession of the football as we get set to bring you the fourth quarter. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Now a first down throw, Stafford. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Amir Abdullah, the intended target. And that'll bring up second down. First, let's see what second down has in store. To throw again. Stafford looking middle, and it's incomplete. So a second down in completion now brings up third down. Out of the gun, Stafford. And he'll find Galladay, that's complete. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. 19 yards that time for number 19. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. Defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football before he knew it. He was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. Second down, here's Stafford. Ebron's got it. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. It used to be occasional, right, safety valve, throw one to him every so often, but more, mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. Offense comes to the line now, first and 10. From the 50, Stafford. And pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. So he can't hang on. And as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know. But you're going to get hit anyways. Might as well hold on to the ball. All right, you know a coach said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player. Not a no chance at all. Way easier said than done. Back to the air. Stafford on second down. He goes underneath to Abdullah, and he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. It's a gain of five on the play, and that's going to bring up a third down. Play number seven now coming up on the drive, third and five. Ah! 
Stafford looks to throw again. And that is incomplete. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they were unsuccessful. Here's Jeff Locke now as he's on to punt for Detroit. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. And you see Dalvin Cook in the offense heading back out. And we have seen a decline in the numbers. Where does the fault lie? Just him? Maybe the guys up front combination? Well, as you and I both know, it's almost always a collective deal. But in this case, I think maybe the offensive line got a little overconfident. They had blocked so well in the first half, picked up on what the defense was doing. I think we've seen an adjustment now that they have not picked up on. And now they're being a little bit overwhelmed. Play fake here on first down. He's got the connection over the middle to Diggs. And a nice gain of 21 yards. I got the sense that the defense created a little momentum for him there, didn't they? Did their job, forced the punt. Now, nice start to the drive. Offense has to do their part. Yeah, they certainly do, but what a great start for them. They've got to go thank the guys on D. set of downs here. Here we go now. Green, 39. On the ground, it's Cook. And a good swarm to the football defensively as they get him down at about the 40. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 12 yards there as they move the chains. I think this defense tired of seeing him run the football on this D-line. Probably getting sick of the O-line as well. And as I'm watching this, I'm thinking about a conversation I had with Adam Gase, the head coach of the Miami Dolphins in the offseason. He told me that he asked his running backs each week for their favorite runs. Give me your three top runs. And right now, you're seeing a guy is probably using his top runs to great advantage in this game. He is in a zone. They go play action here on first down. And his throw is incomplete. Latavius Murray, the intended receiver out of the backfield. And it's second down. Second down following the incompletion. for the first time with a backup Murray. And this time he's going backwards. So after the no gain on the last attempt, here they get him behind the line. And this is why the head coach gets paid the big bucks. Look at where they are in this situation, partner. Do you throw the ball here in a long distance situation? Do you run it again and trust your defense and make sure you take care of the ball and punt it away? What kind of options do you have here? And what do you trust more on your team? Yeah, they may have just pushed him back into that throwing situation. We'll see. The Vikings on third down. Not so hot. Two for nine to this point. This is third down and 12. Now Keenum. And this is going to be incomplete. And it is true. You can draft the fastest. You can draft the most athletic guys. But if they don't know the art of positioning, sometimes it's all for naught. In this case, in the right spot, help force the incompletion. Yeah, but had his hands on it for a second. Would have been a tough catch, though. Falls incomplete.
Here's Ryan Quigley now as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. So out now come the Lions. And you know, their previous possession, they were able to move the football, but still wound up punting in the end. You know, in 2016, Carolina had a 20-play drive mm, yeah. that lasted over 10 minutes. And remember how it ended? In a punt. Yeah, I mean, how does that happen? You just don't see that happen every day. And this one may be not quite that bad, but still, you'd like to have a chance for points if you hold the football that long. Agreed. down Stafford here and he'll be out of bounds across the 30 yard line it's a gain of five and that'll make it second down first play of the drive in their hip pocket of course the focus here has to be the touchdown of the two-point conversion field goals are going to help you yeah but how about that first play of the drive just to get them started nice gain got some positive momentum going they're on their way and they don't have to rush so they complete the pass and now they face a second down From the gun, here's Stafford. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Personal foul, face mask, defense. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all, and now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. Now the offense lining up first and ten. From the gun, Stafford. The left side completion to Jones. And he's brought down. Give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. Well, they obviously red man covers their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what think. What do you mean by that? Bro, bro. Yeah, he made him think he was going to run a different route, probably thought he was going to take it upfield, and then he curls back inside for the completion. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Operating from the gun, Stafford. His throw incomplete. He was trying to get it to TJ Jones that time. And now it's second down. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. Throwing again. Stanford. Had his hands on it, but dropped it. The rookie making a little bit of a rookie mistake. Third down. For plain and simple, that's the second time today that he's dropped a pass. And that one, I think, maybe even a little easier than the earlier one that he dropped. Surprising. And was this game announced as a night game prior to, and maybe his rhythm confused. is just off? He's got know. thrown off. He's got to wake up, enjoy the sunshine, and go play. So still a full 10 yards to go here for the offense on third down. To the air again, Stafford. And this is going to be caught along the sideline. Nicely done, but right at the line of scrimmage. He'll wind up being stopped for no gain, and it'll lead to a fourth down. But he caught it right at the line of scrimmage, and before he could even think about advancing it forward, he got hit. 
Great tackling because that's what you're taught. Don't give up yards after the catch. And most offenses make a living off of yards after catch. Those hidden yards that may not go into the score sheet, but they count big for moving the ball and stretching the field. Really nice open field tackle. That's leaking to the right, and he missed it by a foot or two. It's no good, and this score will stay right where it is. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trite expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Keenum now on first down. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. And there was a good opportunity to just want to ride there. A drop pass. I guess that's why they call them running backs and not catching backs. Second down here after the incomplete pass. Working from the gun, Keenum. And his throw here is incomplete. Dalvin Cook is running back the intended target. And it's third down. The Vikings on third down, just a 20% success rate at 2 of 10. This is third and 10. From the gun, it's Keenum. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. I don't know, he had to be pretty quick with his fingers to start and stop after the ball hit the ground. I'm giving him some credit. Well, I'm thinking about the mental focus, you know? Yeah. The mental focus yeah, on the whole that's thing. true. got to stay with it. That's true. Here's Ryan Quigley now as he's on to punt for Minnesota. This is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. And Detroit getting set to go now. The last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, OK, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. On first down at Stafford. And his throw is going to be incomplete. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them. And not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they're going to have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily fell incomplete. Second and 10, Stafford again. And his throw's going to be incomplete. The effort's always going to be there. Everyone's always going to try and make a catch, but underthrown balls, I think, are the toughest ones to come back and get because usually your momentum's going in the opposite direction when you're trying to stop, break, and come back and get it. Incomplete pass on second down. Let's see what the offense draws up here on third. A shotgun snap for Stafford. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. 
This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. Here's Jeff Locke now as he's on to punt for Detroit. there holds him to a two-yard return following a 50-yard punt and it'll be Viking football here as they take possession the Vikings offense now heading out to take over now, if you're a fan of punting and I know that not many people are but this game kind of turning into one for you well it's okay if it's a skills contest right we're really into it then but not during the course of an actual game this has turned into a field position game though sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. On first down, Keenum. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. looking to avoid a third and long at second and ten. Hey, on Three, Three. From the gun, here's Keenum. He's going to loft this one deep left sideline. And he's unable to grab it. Thought he might have had position, couldn't hold on third down. There's definitely contact there, but it's the fourth quarter of a kind of tight game, and sometimes the officials just say, let them play. Kind of like your mom used to, you and your brothers, just take the broom to you and send you out to the backyard and tell you to settle it yourselves. <laughs> I like that, yeah. There was contact. I don't know, like you said, enough to warrant the flag. It was close, though. The Vikings on third down. They've converted just twice and have had plenty of opportunities. This is third and ten. Now Keenum. Screenplay, McKinnon. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. A nice pickup there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Couldn't just sit on it here, could they? Had to throw the ball on third down. Got the big completion in the pickup. Fresh set of downs now. They've got to feel great. And defensively a backbreaker. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Now Cook. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. That one good for 10 yards. And that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. Now I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Here we go now. Three, nine, Handoff comes to Cook. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. Well, they didn't accomplish their goal. They didn't get a stop there, gave up another first down. They have all three timeouts in their pocket. I think defensively, you've got to start thinking about using them here. I was just going to ask you, at what point you think now is the go time? I think now is the go time. I don't think you sit back and wait because they can take a lot of time off the clock between plays and run three to four and really put you in a stressful spot. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And, oh, no, he lost the football. And this is scooped up by the Lions. And they're going to set up shop at the 27-yard line. Well, that takeaway, partner, right there, that's a combination of coaching 
execution and absolute belief because a lot of guys will look at the scoreboard and go, ah, this thing's pretty well done. But they still thought to themselves, if we could make a play, we give our team, we give our teammates a chance to win it. And that's exactly what they did. And the Vikings defense ready to head back out there now. Their stay on the field last time was short-lived with a three and out. Let's see if they can get some more of that. And ordinarily, you want to be on the field playing, right? But three and out, that's almost gold to a defense. Get to the bench, get some rest, turn the ball over to your offense. We'll see what they can do here, see if they can force another three and out. Fumble recovery, Stafford. They'll find a man over the middle. It's Galladay. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. The offense certainly looking to score some points, but they also need ball security here late as we get down to the final moments of this one. On first and 10, Stafford. Room here to run. And he will avoid the contact as he slides to a stop. It'll be a gain of eight yards, and it'll be a second down. for a break. We'll come back, see what transpires after this. So the Lions in possession of the football as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Here's Stafford now on second down. And, oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Mackenzie Alexander with a pick. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. That's the story of the game. They've been suffocating all game long on defense. They were suffocating there again in a big way. And they've done it not just by out-athleting them, which is often the case, but by being able to adjust to anything they tried to throw at them and beating them into the punch each and every time. This was a defense that was well prepared. Still an important piece of business to take care of, the extra point. And the lead is up to 15 now. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. 
The Lions offense, they get ready to head back onto the field. pick six throwing the slant pattern here complete seven yards the pickup on the pitch and catch Stafford barking out signals and trying to get his guy set quickly now Stafford and he goes out of bounds just shy of the 45 a solid gain of 15 yards and the sticks move Working the sideline there. Good route, good catch. First down, and he gets out of bounds. They have to like the play calling because you have to run some guys down the middle of the field to draw some of the defenders away. They can't just let them guard the sideline exclusively. That's how it's going to work. Sidelines and incompletions to use the clock. down. Oh, nearly a disaster there on the check down. But they'll get it back. I guess they're in a situation now, fourth quarter, where they're forced to take some chances, but I don't know that that was a type of a chance you want to take. And that one could very easily have been intercepted. And if it does get picked off, that could possibly seal this one. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. To throw again. Stafford. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's the one that has to absorb the contact. And as a result, unable to hold on to the football. Third down here for the offense after the incomplete pass. Throwing again at Stafford. And he overshot him there. It's out of bounds incomplete. They're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he won't get there. They stop him a few yards short of the line to gain. Flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it is going to be 15 yards. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Now a first down throw, Stafford. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. Everson Griffin in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. Now whistles and a flag down. Looked like one of the Lions linemen might have moved. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five.
To throw on second down at Stafford. And his throw is incomplete. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Out of the gun, Stafford. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Now on fourth down, we've got a whistle here and a timeout as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in the fourth. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gaunt alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes a timeout. And now we're set to get going. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. Now whistles and a flag down. Looked like one of the Lions linemen might have moved. So that'll back him up five. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout. And now they get set to line up as we resume action. this fourth and long and they're going to go for it they'll try and run with Abdullah and this doesn't end well at all as they stop him far behind the line to gain they had to go for it with such little time remaining and the Vikings are going to win this football game so with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about Slim and none? Well, Slim just left town on that <laughs> They're one. They're down to none? Yes, exactly right. The Vikings offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And last time, the fumble, the turnover. Now they still have the lead, but I don't think coaches care. The turnovers will bother them no matter what the scoreboard says. If that's the relief, that you still have the lead. But coaches look at what if and what it should be. Turning the ball over when they've got a chance to score more points and increase the lead, that's what's going to affect them. And they're also thinking to future weeks, maybe when the game's closer, right? No doubt about it. You want to clean up everything. Let's just be honest about it. They want everything to be perfect at all times. They don't want to give up anything that's going to hurt their team. Now a run with Cook. And he'll bring this one inside the 35. And we're going to get another timeout called by the Lions. That'll be their second, so one more chance to stop the clock here. And we'll be back. The D can only stop it one more time as they take the knee. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field.
To his knee goes Keenum, and that should be the ball game. Here's Ryan Quigley now as he's on to punt for Minnesota. And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. It's a win for the Vikings as we say so long from Minneapolis.